Okay. You're done with your quiz. Time to learn about parallel circuits. No, you can't have a break. Pocket PRT. Take it out. Hurry up. Terry! Take out that PRT. All right, go. Of course, page four. We're doing parallel circuits. So, we're going to use the parallel circuit rules. Have it ready there. Of course, Ohm's Law is also on the menu. Good, let's go. All right, how do we solve parallel circuits? Once again, multi-resistor. One, two, multi-resistor circuit. What are you going to ask yourself? Mush? That's right, man. Harder hole. Harder hole. Okay, you're going to set up that nice chart. Is it annoying? Maybe. Does it work? Absolutely. All right, just as a reminder, one thing that's nice, one thing that passes through the semi-permeable membrane is... Mm, Louis? <laughs> All right, one thing that passes through is... Potential difference, voltage. There it is. Don't film the empty seats. <laughs> They're looking up here the whole time. I'm going to yell at them. All right, now, let's go over here. Pyramid, not density. What goes on top? Yes, the upside down to the right side up. VIR pyramid, you're going to use that. Okay, so we're going to use our, well, it depends. What kind of circuit do we have here? Just as a reminder, we follow the conventional current. Runs away from the high potential. Wants to get to the low. Here it goes. And, yes, we have a junction. We have options. It's going to split. When you see that, you know that this is a, what type of surrogate? Jank? All right, that's good. Parallel circuit. Okay, so parallel circuit rules. Let's go. First thing you got to do is write down your givens. Write down your givens. Let's go. What do you see? No thinking yet. No math yet. Just what numbers do you see up here on the board? Raymond. All right, good. We have the total voltage. Anything else? Well, let's see. Not, not, slow down now. Don't be talking about the rules yet. Just write the givens first. The other givens we have automatically. Dottie? You know the individual resistors. This resistor is an 8 ohm resistor. This resistor is a 4 ohm resistor. Okay, now we're ready to go. That's all we need and we can actually handle everything in this chart. Beware, this is not a series circuit. You cannot just boom, 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 know the answer. You've got to think a little bit. So, first thing we can solve for, Jackie. Jackie, you were talking of yesterday at those election talks. All right, that's right. You've got to get your resistance. So how do we get the resistance? Let's come down here. This is a parallel circuit. You look up that parallel circuit rule. 1 over REQ equals, well, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. We have two resistors. You don't need to keep going. Run your numbers in here. Everybody try it out. Mr. Levine, if you want to pause the video and let them try it out, you can do that. You're not Mr. Levine. Don't pause it. All right. Let's come back over here. So, we have 1 over REQ equals 1 over 8 plus 1 over 4. You can do it however you want. You want to do a common denominator, that works out. It'll be 1 over 8 plus 2 over 8. You get 3 over 8. You've got to flip it. 8 over 3. 8 over 3, so your REQ becomes 2.67 ohms. So we come in here, the equivalent resistance, REQ, 2.67 ohms. Cool. There's a shortcut, which I did not talk about, but let's go back here. This is a nice shortcut. If you only have two resistors in parallel, this only works for two now, get extra credit if you're interested, you can actually do this nice simple formula, which is product over sum. That actually can make this a bit quicker, a bit easier. You want to see if that works, let's see here. Product, 8 times 4, that's 32, over sum, 8 plus 4, that's 12, 32 over 12. Well, if you're not sure if that's this, remember we had 8 over 3, 
Reduce. Divide by 4, divide by 4. This is 8 over 3. It's the same answer. So that should work. Okay, now that we got this, what can we do? What can we do? We're going to figure out here. What are we going to figure out here? Terry! Okay, get that current. I equals. Well, what does I equal? You go to your pyramid, block it out. Yes, that's V over R. So I equals V over R. V over R, 240 divided by 2.67. Well, go ahead, get your answer. 240 divided 2.67. It's bothersome for me. I'd rather do 240 divided 8 thirds. Let's see. That's 33. That should be 90. Jobo, check my math that I'm not messing these up. You're doing 240 divided 2.67. Comes out 90 amps. Good. What can we do next? Hmm. What can we do next? Normally you think, oh, series circuit, let me run this across. But this is not a series circuit. What else do you know? What else can you do? Look for it. Look for it. Oh, that's it. Potential difference. Same everywhere. Piece of cake. 240. 240. Okay, here we go. Minesweeper, putting these together. What can we get next? Well, we can get the current over here, can't we? I equals V over R. Of course, this one easy. 240 over 8, like 24 over 8 would be 3. This is 30 amperes. Do we have an expectation for this one before we even do the math? There should be. There is a current rule. The individual currents should add up, so we should expect, well, let's see. I is V over R, 20, 240 over 4, 24 over 4 is 6, so 240 over 4 is 60, and yes, in fact, it confirms the current rule for a parallel circuit. Oh, now we're making moves, making moves. Okay, what's next? Power. Okay, power. Pick the easiest one. V times I is the easiest one. Ugh, look at this mess. V times I, 240 times 90. Well, we could do... That would be 225 and 9 less. What's that? 216 uh, with two zeros, right? 21,600? 21, okay, good. I can still do math. That's nice. 21,600. Good. Now, you can do the same thing with the others. V times I. These are a little easier. You can pause this at any point and run the numbers, then replay it. Okay, so V times I here, this one's going to be 72 and two zeros, 7,200. What's the unit? Terry? What? What? All right, yeah, well, good. Okay, over here, last one, V times I, 24 times 6. Let's see, 150, 6 less, that's going to be 144 with two zeros, 14,400 watts. Yes? Good. Next. Find the energy in one minute. At this point, <clears throat> this is going to start looking to you like the series circuit. We're just running the power equation. We're just running the work equation. So the work, you can do it a number of different ways, but the easiest one is, of course, P times T. The time is one minute. Can we put a one in there? Kelly, can we put a one in there? No, we can't put a one in there. Okay. you got to put 60, of course. Good. So P times T, 21,600 times 60. Jobo, do the math for me. I don't feel like doing it. 21,600 times 60. 1,296,000. Woo! Okay, Victoria, what's the unit? Yes, it's a joke. Good. All right, next one, Jobo. 7,200 times 60. 432,000. 432,000. Joule. And finally... 14,400 times 60. 864,000. 864,000. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, you can also call this 864 kilojoules. Now, look here. Do you notice a relationship? Do you notice an unwritten rule of power and also of energy? Hmm. What would happen if we took 14,400 and added it to 7,200? Well... 14,000 plus 7,000, that gives you the 21,000. 400 plus 200, that gives you the six. Oh, would you look at that? It adds. Oh, that's nice. Well, wait, look at this one. Look at this one. No, you ain't going nowhere. That ain't your bell. Stay in class. Look at this one. Wait, 800,000 and 400,000? Oh, that gives you 1.2 million. That's 
$1,200,000, there it is. And $64,000, your night is sick. Oh, it adds two. Oh, that's so nice. In fact, look at the unwritten rule of power and work. It's the same as it was for series. Both power and work sum in parallel. So not only do you only really have to memorize one thing for series, it's the same thing for parallel. Power and work, they're not in the reference table, but they add up. That's convenient. All right, quick version over here. Find the charge. This is nothing at this point. This is nothing at this point. We know how to do this. Look, we're going to work in pink because it's nice. Q, you can do it. You want to do V over W? Fine. I don't care. You want to do I times T? That's fine too. One minute, I times T. 90 times 60. Well, that's easy. 5,400 Coulombs. Okay. Now, current is not the same everywhere in a parallel circuit. Therefore, charge should not be the same everywhere either. In fact, current adds 30 plus 60 gave you 90. Charge is going to do the same thing. So, I times T, 30 times 60, 1800 Coulombs, and 60 times 60, 3600 Coulombs. All right, last one. Electrons in a minute. Number of electrons. You mean? Why are you making me do the number of electrons? You mean? It's not that hard. You take your 50. Get out of the way of the video. <laughs> what? Oh. Take your 5,400 Coulomb and convert it into elementary charge. Joe, why are doing this one in my head? 6.25 times 10 to the 18th. Multiply that junk, please. Don't walk from the video. Take this paper. Joe, answer. Okay, uh, I put the wrong number. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Not like time urgency here or anything. The phone calculator, man. All right. Okay. It is uh, a big number. Yeah, 3.375 times 10 to the 22nd. 10 to the 22nd electron. I trust that you can do these two. You'll figure that out. Stop walking in front of the camera. You get out of the way. Okay. And of course, if they are lamps, rank them in order of decreasing brightness this time. Which of course would mean decreasing power. Okay, good. Cut.